Suge Knight and Easy e respected each other since they were both from the streets, and Dr. Dre knew Easy because they were from the same city, and so they created their own group called NWA, which became the most influential group in the 90s. However, after huge money got involved, everything began to collapse. The first one who noticed that the NWA members were being paid too little was Ice Cube, who refused to sign a contract and left the group, and later Dr. Dre. Then when Easy met Jerry, Jerry came in and ex Dre out and said, you know, Eric, I'll give you a little bit more money. We just use Dre basically as a slave. During the course of several conversations between the DOC and Dr. Dre, the question arose about how they would be paid in the future. The DOC said, Look Dre, if you're gonna make records, then I'll help you create the company. You won't have to worry about the money, you'll keep everything under control yourself. The DOC knew Suge and invited him to meet with Dr. Dre. Suge Knight asked for copies of Dre's contract from Jerry Heller so that he could look at the terms of the contract. As it turned out, he had the worst contract imaginable. According to Michelle, Suge Knight said they were getting about two cents off each record, and Dre was furious. Norman Winter, a former Death Row publicist, told how Dre and Suge came to the office of Ruthless Records and said that he was leaving and creating his own company, Death Row Records. But they had to talk to Easy e The meeting between Suge and Easy e was instigated by Dr. Dre himself, who offered to meet up but did not come personally. Nothing went as planned. Easy e had to be persuaded to agree to letting Dre go. According to court documents, Suge and his friends came to Eric and Heller and said that Dre was leaving. Period. They clearly weren't following the law and used force against them. Eric said that Suge Knight's men were with baseball bats and threatened them. The big man threatened to kill Easy's relatives, which forced the guys to release Dr. Dre from his contract. You gonna sign these? releasing Dre and DOC from Ruthless. Easy e filed a lawsuit against them on the basis of RICO. That was the first time that RICO was used in the music business. RICO is a racketeering case used against the Mafia when they couldn't be judged on other articles. In the statement, Easy e wrote about money laundering, extortion, and severe intimidation. I gotta kill this motherfucker, Shug Knight. In short, he dissuaded him. The NWA was unable to escape Knight's terror and hired security to try to deal with him. In a panic, NWA's manager Jerry Heller hired two weightlifting champions as bodyguards and there were weapons in every corner of the Ruthless Wrecker's office. And then Eric was, if he walked between my legs, excuse my friends, people probably would think he was my penis. <laughs> so. You know, I tried to destroy my record company with the help of others, Dre. So right now we're getting everything back together and we finna come out, you know. And Dre releases his debut album. In the opening song of the album, The Chronic, Dre and Snoop Dogg openly diss TZE. -E. Fuck Mr. Rourke and Tattoo, aka Jerry and Easy. Sincerely yours, these mother Everybody is gonna be me, Ren, Ice Cube, and Yella. Cause we staying sucker free in 93. So we don't deal with Drake. Cause you know where he came from. World class wrecking crew. So it's like that now, you know. We staying sucker free in 93. That's so you mean it's static with you and Drake? What? I Dre ain't got no love. There were disses towards Easy E and other songs as well. No a bitch named Merrick Wright. We used to roll the I fuck the hoes at night Dick on hard From fucking your road dogs The hood you threw up with Niggas you grew up with Basically I had Dre uh, Signed as exclusive producer And exclusive artist mm -hmm. So when Dre tried to make his deal Over at Interscope You know I was included for the next six years So You can say all you want to say <laughs> Basically you could diss me all you want But I'm gonna get paid Cause that's why I say Dre Day is only easy's payday and that's real. 
The conflict was not dying down. Jimmy Iovine from Interscope came to an agreement with Ruthless Records that all of Dre's earnings under Death Row would be transferred to Ruthless. So in order to pay Easy less, it was always Suge Knight, not Dr. Dre who was written down as executive producer. Going it's down. going down. And the commercial for it is just it's going crazy down. fast. Oh yeah. It's just fast. It's going, it's going down. down. Right yeah. now. It's going down. Marks get no respect. It was going to take some time to calculate the royalties, so they constantly tried to bypass paying Easy, which Suge of course didn't like. He had money and influence, but he couldn't touch Easy because Easy E was very tight with gangs. In order to somehow take revenge on Easy, Suge Knight paid the radio station's money not to play Eric's songs. Knight then tried to persuade the mayor not to give Easy permission to shoot his video in Compton. But Easy met with the mayor himself and got permission. And of course, Easy had to reply to the disrespect, which he did on several occasions. Stethoscope, you know, he found low riding all of a sudden. I mean, he never did this stuff in his life, never. Mm -hmm. uh, now he's a hardcore G from the streets, which from NWA he never sound or tr uh, tried to be so hard. Right. All of a sudden, he didn't did so many murders and you know, looting. And on his album, he's talking about he's looting a place that couldn't even be been touched when the looting was going on. Right. But he said they looted this place. That's how much you know he know about the streets, really. Niggas ain't shit in the nineties. I don't trust them. And bitches on my dick, but they ain't shit. So motherfuck them. But the most important diss was real motherfucking G's. Fuck Jay, motherfuck Snoop, motherfuck Death Row. Joe, when he comes, my love. Jail and did time and this and that and they ain't never been to jail. Drake did you know time. What I'm he did time. What kind of time he did? Time with the wrecking crew. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Lipstick, right? See, see, he didn't know nothing about no street doing street music until he hooked up with me anyway. He used to do all that techno stuff, the fly, he's bionic, the turn. Then the conflict died down a bit and Dre continued to work in Death Row. Tupac came and they released California Love. To some extent, the arrival of Pac at Death Row influenced Dre's decision to leave the label. Pac needed everything all at once and Dre was a notorious perfectionist. In addition, Dre did not like the situation in Death Row, which was shown in the film. And y'all ain't here acting like y'all on motherfucking vacation. I got Pac in the next motherfucking room. Grinding, man. Working. Dr. Dre decided to leave Death Row. He didn't want any conflict, so he agreed to leave with empty pockets. I said, Jimmy, when you want him, he can go with you, but he has to leave with the shirt on his back. At the end of the day, everybody knows Dre's a hoe. There is one legend that was told in the Death Row Chronicles that after Dre had left the label, he took all the masters with him, which angered Suge Knight. Suge tried to intimidate the producer, but it didn't work out. Suge himself denies this version, but later another reason why Dre decided to leave came out. As Dre said in an interview, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Nearly two decades later, Dre filed a lawsuit against his former label alleging that they owed him over $3 million in unpaid royalties. According to Radar Online, legal documents alluded that Dre believed there to be a discrepancy in the payments he received from Death Row Records and that they'd yet to honor a bonus from records sold while the label was in bankruptcy. Rolling Stone notes that Dre was allegedly looking for over $666,000 in unpaid mechanical royalties, over $1.2 million for unpaid artists and producer royalties as well as nearly $1.2 million in digital sales. In February 1995, Eazy-E got very sick with a severe cough. Upon admission to the hospital, he was diagnosed with AIDS. On March 16th, 1995, he announced his illness and just 10 days later, on the 26th, he unfortunately died of pneumonia caused by AIDS. Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and Eazy-E settled their beef before Eazy's death. However, this is not the end of the story between Shug Knight and Easy. They got the stuff to call, they get blood from somebody with AIDS, 
Yeah. And it'll shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know something? I should have let him kill him. Yeah. You know, he would have. I would have done the world a favor. He would have done it for sure. Do you believe in this version? Let me know in the comments. I recommend you check out the next video about how 50 Cent trolls celebrities. See you guys later.